All right, excuse all of the uh, shenanigans there. Sorry about that. I just updated my OS and all of my applications on my computer, and some some of the things are not where I'm used to them being. With that, it's going to be a mini presentation today before we jump into it. If you have any question, just go ahead and ask your question. You can ask questions now, and when I come out of the presentation, I will answer them. <clears throat> With that, let's a uh, little bit more information about what I'm doing. There's a little confusion, so I'm going to clear it up. The course that I'm doing is still going on. It's just it's a paid course, and I'm going to keep on. And I'm switching things up because I'm scared. I'm straight up scared. I had the craziest dream of 10 years from now because so many things, and it influenced this presentation, as we know it, have changed or will, will change. And there's nothing really dependable. It used to be if you were a nurse, you didn't have to worry about being laid off. No longer true. Fireman, police officer, you didn't have to worry about being laid off. No longer true. There's nothing that's safe. And this kind of concerns me because what about all of those people who cannot find suitable employment? I mean, is there going to be anarchy? I don't know what the hell is going to happen. I mean, when you have a significant group of people who are unable to find jobs and feed themselves and their family, we all have problems. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing these Q&As and I've changed up my business model because one thing that came back to me when I started doing those my life is a day laborer videos and there, there'll be more. I think the next one's going to be my Russ, My name's Russell. Damn it. That dude was a fool. I remember how impoverished I was. Things that I don't think nothing of doing now would have been an incredible burden. Like I just recently spent hundred yeah, 200 bucks for some software back then. That's what I made per week. That's what I made per week. 200 bucks and some change for a whole 40 plus hours of work. And I started thinking about my mindset. And that's where many of you are. When I say that there's all of this opportunity, people are like, Burr, and then what are you talking about? Opportunity? Man, I can't pay my rent. They're about to repossess my car. The house is in foreclosure. And the baby needs a new pair of shoes, and I only have two dollars in my wallet. Wallet, man, what are you talking about? I don't see that. I don't feel that. Uh, I think you know you've got some magic jelly beans up your ass or something because that is not my reality. And that is the thing. Reality. Everyone lives on a different plane right now. Things are so different across the board <clears throat> for so many people. Why is this mindset? If I did not change the way that I thought about the world, I would still be living like that. I saw a guy on the street. I know it was him from the boarding house. He had his backpack, was older, thinner, but it was him. And he was waiting for the bus. In the 15. Wow, I guess this. Shit, 17, 18 years um, from that, from being in that position, there are people who were right there with me who are still there. What's the difference between those cats and myself? I knew I was fucked up. There's this whole thing about keeping it real. Just keep it real. Be who you are. I stand and I submit to you. Many people have no idea who they are. The lives that they have, they inherited it from somebody. So what we're going to do in this space is try to really, really work on your mindset. And I'm going to give you some truth. So with that, let's jump into it. I told someone this today. You should start a business. And when I was going through my first iterations of business, which I failed massively, it was much safer 
more sure and secure to get a job. It really was. Everything was clicking. If you didn't have any skills, you can go into the military. Now, you can't get into the military without a GED. I will not be surprised if in five or six years you can't get in the military without a college degree. Wouldn't be surprised if that happens because there's so many people with that qualification. The military's downsizing. They're rifting people out. Everything is risky. There's no such thing as safe haven. Well, it's like I'm in medical. To a degree, there are certain medical positions that are safer. There's a difference between being safe and safer. Safer is the guy's on base, but if he like his foot comes off that bag and the offensive player is on his game, he's out. So that's safer. You still in jeopardy. You haven't made it home yet. Everything is risky. I mean, everything. I look at the news. I look at what's going on. And the big thing that's about to happen is massive displacement. I recently have employed some software that's probably going to save me several thousand a year. It costs me 30 bucks a month. This is what's happening. This is what's going on. But <clears throat> with that, you have to think, what do you really want to do? And I actually can answer that question for you. You want to be able to control your life. And some of you have jobs that allow that. Most people don't. If you do, be, for, be grateful and be very, very happy because you're rare. Many people do things they don't want to do to get the money to live. Going to school. Everyone that's <laughs> known me for a while have been on this channel. Know how I feel about this. And to be really, really clear, going to school and getting education is not a bad thing. That's not my problem. And this is my problem with today's educational system. People are spending massive money to gain skills they cannot use in the workplace. That's my problem. I did the math. I didn't. I went ahead and subtracted doctors, engineers, attorneys, accountants, uh, subtract the people who have to have a degree for their profession from everyone else. And the income differential is nil. <laughs> there is no income differential. Take those people out of the equation. Then you see the bogusness for what it is. I'm talking about the Jedi, Jedi mind trick of galactical proportions and that's my deal if you can go to school if you're here on george in georgia and you have a hope scholarship and you can get your four years of undergrad and not pay any money go but if you are going to have to pay 50 60 70 80 hundred thousand dollars to go to school and have that as student loan debt let me give you a little math if you don't pay that off rather quickly, quickly being within five or seven years, if you take the full time allotted to pay it back, you could be at two hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a job that qualifies you to work at Starbucks. I mean for a degree that qualifies you to work at Starbucks. That's not financially sound. It doesn't make any sense. School is risky right now. And let's talk about you're going to school for something you did the research. The outlook of those career fields is pretty good. And the demand is supposed to swell. Okay. That's what the data says right now. One of the things I like about Marine Corps leadership philosophy, one of the tenets is once you have 70% of the information, make your decision. Because by the time you get up to 100%, Conditions have changed. How long does it take someone to go to school? Very few people graduate in four years. Most people graduate in five and a half to seven. So you do that research your freshman year. By the time you graduate from college, conditions have changed. You could be going for a school, the school for a degree that is hot right now. People making money. It's a good, it's a good decision based on data. But the future with technology is going to jack up a lot of those people who did the right thing. That's how fast technology is moving and that's how fast technology is displacing people. 
I already know what's going on with jobs. They'll tell you, the, I didn't look it up, but suppose I think unemployment is like 7%. Let's really break that down. I'm going to give you a little fact. I didn't know this until someone brought it to my attention. Do you know the unemployment rate for black men is 50%? Latino men is slightly less. So when you really, really start adding certain things into the equation, the real unemployment level is probably 20 to 30% across the board when you factor in everybody. That's a lot of problems. That's a lot of people. Uh, I've noticed to start taking note when I go to the grocery store, how many people are using WIC. Every time I get in line, there's somebody in front of me using WIC or food stamps. Virtually every time, unless I go late at night. A lot of people are suffering. So you shouldn't start a business because getting a job is going to be better. Mm, maybe, maybe not. But that line of people waiting to go to a job fair, that is common across this, the uh, United States right now. Every day, somebody's getting fired. Everyone's looking for a job. When I put up the video about eBay cutting uh, sellers, I received so many sad emails from people that, oh, God, eBay was my only source of income. I got laid off 18 months ago, and uh, we started doing eBay, and it was supporting us. Now it's gone. Well, once again, once again, eBay and Amazon are not your business. They're a business that allows you to participate in the risk and reward dynamic. That's what it is. So you got that. Jobs aren't safe. And going back, <laughs> government jobs. Fire, firefighters, police officers, nurses, doctors. Yes, doctors of certain facilities laid off. Nothing is safe. Nothing. So that whole thing of it's better to get a job because it's safer than starting your business. In my mind, and this is my opinion, uh, it's not fact, just for me, it's the way I run my life. You just you have just as much risk having a job today as you do starting your own business. Just as much. There's a group of people who have certain jobs that they're good to go, but that's not everybody. Now, this is the real reason you should start a business. Freedom. Will it come immediately? No. No. You will have to work your tender hind parts off until you get to a certain level. But if you craft freedom into your goals, you put that into your life map, you, you want to do that, you can make it happen. Freedom is different things to different people. Me, freedom is I don't have to go to a job. I don't have to answer people to people I hate. I don't have to work with people I can't stand. And I come and go as I please. And all the bills are paid and there is food in the refrigerator. That's freedom to me. I put a premium, more so of a premium on my time than I think most people do. Because if I worked more, <laughs> I probably could make more money. But the time is more important to me. Like I said, freedom is different things to different people. When you get free, you also open up a Pandora's box because most people are not free. And when they're not free and they see that you're like running around the yard in your shorts and the sprinklers go, oh, I'm free, baby. Oh, son, rubbing the sun on your chest. And they're inside working and looking at you with hate. They just can't stand your free ass. <laughs> but it's worth it. It's worth it. I, I will tell you that it is definitely worth it. Now, let's get to Q&A episode number two that coming out and come on pop back up sometimes it ah, it does not want to be here there we go all right so let's just jump into this and we're gonna put that down and we're gonna get into the questions This is a great question from Hector. Is there a day or an event that you can point to that caused you to make the decision to change your life? You damn skippy. I went through an 18 month period where I got laid off three times in 18 months. It was that last layoff that changed me. I became a different person. I got laid off six weeks later. I was working at Rent a Crate. Totally changed me. Uh, it was I had the 
reality of a job being more secure than your business ripped from under me. I mean, I was like every six months I was looking for another job. I was like, what the hell? It was totally that was it. That was it. Christina, do you believe it would be beneficial for me to start an online store and sell my storage auction findings? Really depends on what you find. That's a very broad question. You need more specifics. If you're finding good stuff, possibly. <clears throat> um, excuse me. Your big issues with starting an online store is going to be discovered. That is a really broad question that I could speak on for about an hour. But simply put, if you get good stuff from storage auctions, there's many places you can sell it, including your own store. But I would not open up a store immediately. What I would do is go along your Facebook friends. And this is in the, my course, 30 days, 2,500 bucks. And you will try to do as much business as you can where you are before you move to bigger and broader pastures. Josh, <laughs> Jedi mind trick. It is, man. It is. It's of galactical proportions. Joseph. Yes. Plus those numbers don't even take into account all the people who have simply stopped looking for work, which is true. Uh, Chuck, not all displacements or layoffs are caused by technology. Yeah, that's true. Uh, technology is going to be a big driver. A lot of people get laid off because of greed. <laughs> <laughs> Much is caused by a bad economy. U.S. dollar not having the same power it once had. Messed up government, bad funding, planning, some of it in management design like Lean Six Sigma. That many causes, causes weights. What are your thoughts? I'm going to say all of those things contribute. This is what I'm looking at. When I was a bum during those uh, labor day labor days, the economy was doing great. I wasn't, but the economy at large was doing great. I started this company in 2009 when the economy, actually the company started sucking ass in 2006. We know this that. I started this brand new business in 2009 when the economy was sucking ass and I did great. Essentially, there's the broader economy and then there's your economy. When you start creating your economy, you'll notice that everyone else could be sucking ass and you could be doing fine. It just takes a different mindset and a different application of your time. But I agree with you. <laughs> a lot of those things have caused unemployment. And unemployment rate is going to go higher. And that's the scary part. Christopher, what are your thoughts on affiliate marketing as an additional income stream? I am a bad person to ask that question. I know in my mind there are some good affiliate marketing um, programs. But most of them to me are unpalatable. I don't like them. There's too much rah, rah, rah. There's like, and maybe, a, yeah, affiliate marketing and multi-level marketing kind of closely related to me. I know they're different things. If you can find one that works, hey, great. I mean, Amazon has an affiliate program. You put stuff there on your, you put links on your website, people buy, you get money. My big problem is you could be working just as hard on that stuff as you could on your own business and not make any money. But there are viable affiliate marketing things out there. I don't know of any. Can't recommend any. Chuck, what are your thoughts on selling stuff on consignment? Using someone else's store, selling skills worth the cut, the cut and hassle. Would this work best for antiques since the S in <laughs> antiques is for slow? Truth be told, we sold a lot of stuff for cons on consignment for people that we knew. It could be a great way to earn money when you have no money. It's just mentally can you deal with the hassle factor, and there will be a hassle factor. I think it's fine if you know what you're getting into. Aaron, I recently started looking into importing. Importing to go sell at swap meets, uh, flea markets, any thoughts? Uh if you can get a good cost basis, meaning you get your stuff cheap enough to make a profit, go for it. I mean, many people are doing it. 
Chuck, what are your thoughts on the domestic oil boom? Ideas on going to work as a wildcat or a pipe fitter or related hard work, good money. Uh, I will let you know something. I have a lot of friends in Texas. And during this recession, there wasn't one in Texas. Because Texas is an energy state. If you want to do that thing, hey, go at it. I would say do what people who went over to Iraq as contractors. Because I hear the money's that good. Go out there, work your ass off for a few years and save all your money and come back with a plan. One of the things I know about doing physically demanding work, there's going to come a time you can't do it. And that's the thing with oil. And But hey, if you can make that happen, just go out there with a plan. I think it's good for the country. I think it's good for uh, people looking for jobs. But how long is it going to last? A Dolphus, what type of businesses would you recommend for someone who works abroad? That is a loaded question because there's two factors that come to mind. The person who wants the business, what can they do? What are their skill sets? And number two, where are they? I mean, there are certain places you can't do certain things. So you need a little bit more information. <laughs> Okay, I hate that affiliate marketing shit. G Stradamus. Alrighty then. That's a different kind of name. Uh Chris, third days twenty five hundred did just that. Join FB groups to sell stuff through. It's uh now my best selling channel. Only drawback is the selling rules of each group and you can't list a bunch of stuff at once. I use it for mid to high level items. Plus, I monitor to see what's selling on the channels. There you are. <laughs> Chris, I'm thinking about having an upscale Mother's Day garage sale. Purses, shoes, dresses. Uh, they will buy. They will buy. Melalucia. Uh, what businesses did you start when you were laid off and the last time when did it start paying your bills? All right. Uh, for those who didn't hear the story, the third time I got laid off, I went home and I had an epiphany. I sketched out, I dropped out of college my junior year and I was looking at going back. So I came up with a plan of finishing undergrad and actually going to grad school. And I mapped it out. It was going to take me six to seven years to do this. Now, I would have been coming out of college with my MBA around 2006, 2007. <laughs> we know what happened. So I did all that stuff and I was like, OK, well, why I do this? I need a job. But the shit jobs that I've been doing didn't pay enough money. So I went on Monster.com and I looked for jobs that I knew I can do, but I didn't have any experience. So I used uh, what Google Voice does for free is uh, it used to be. A voicemail box that will text your pager. That's how long ago this was. And I created a fake reference and got a job at Rent-A-Crate. And then I went to Rent-A-Crate. I was with Rent-A-Crate eight months. Then I moved to another company. I was there for nine months. Essentially, I became a seeker of knowledge for my own best interest. I didn't. Get, I used to be the type of person. It's going to sound very strange. I was extremely loyal before. The uh, event of divorce and stuff. When I joined Northside Hospital, the only thing that was on my resume was U.S. Army, and then when I got my part-time job at Scottish Right. I, I I was like, I was like, wow, you're here for five years. You were, I didn't really switch jobs. I was extremely loyal, and then I got thrown out into the wolves, and became a wolf. So I left those companies about it's about about nineteen months, twenty months, because essentially. I will say when I left uh, Rent the Crate and went to you know business environments, I was 100% commission. So at that point, I became self-employed, and I got my first check 45 days later. Uh, Jonathan, what do you think about reselling black soap, and what are your thoughts on that business? It's booming. Anything that you sell to women. Who in who are the biggest buying block in the country? You got a shot, Chuck. How did you get your guns like checked out? If they came back stolen, you and the checker had some explaining to do. My partner was dating a cop. He did all that for us. We we never had a problem. Uh, 
Adolphus, I teach English in China, maybe import export. Well, since you're on the uh, the ground, you just kind of look for trends. Um, but this is the thing. The import export game can be very <laughs> expensive. You can get a lot of small stuff shipped and not break the bank. But I would say focus on stuff you know a lot about. That's going to help you tremendously. And we have someone in the on this webinar who's actually in China, if I'm reading that correctly, because it just hit me. It's like, he's in China? What time is it in China? This is Cherries, I believe. I have an opportunity to put the inventory of 10,000 pieces from a consignment shop online. Do you have any suggestions where I should start? The owner does everything manual now. Thank you. First thing you need to do is have a written agreement stating everyone's responsibility and duties. Do not do this without any kind of written uh, contract. Also, decide who has possession of the items. With 10,000 items, I'm quite sure he's going to storm. And essentially, you gotta, you've you got to work out those details and get something signed and make sure everybody's happy for you to start listing stuff or you can list stuff. But no, whatever you start doing is what his expectations will be through the remainder of your relationship together. Louis business decisions. I'm sometimes approached by people that offer me profitable opportunities. I walk away when it doesn't feel right, but then I toss a turn the night wondering if I passed up on a great opportunity. Is this the quality of a good businessman or a bad one? Can't really say. It sounds like you're just cautious. I want you to think about this. <clears throat> How often does someone walk up and say, here's some money? It's just not normal. And part of that, you're in New York. <laughs> That's another reason. Uh, in the future, just take it a little further and see if it's worth your time and effort. Aaron, what is your thoughts on drop shipping for an e-commerce store, Shopify? If you can find a reliable shop uh, drop shipper, um, I have no problems with it. But this is the thing you have to remember with drop shippers. They're not loyal. They can't afford to be. So at any time, whatever you're selling could be run out or bought from under you. <laughs> Melissa. Not trying to be weird or anything, but I think Cleaver needs to make a Facebook page so people can see his process. I have a feeling he's going somewhere where he wants quick. I think Melissa's feeling Cleaver if he's here today. Chris, Glendon, thank you for everything. Followed your advice, cranked it up so with the new Xbox One and PS4 came out last Christmas, I had enough cheddar to buy my boys both systems plus some games. Glendon, when my boys opened their presents, I broke down. I mean, 6'1", 225, buffed out man, just losing it. No way could I have done this without your help. Thank you, Glendon. Wow, man, that's a really cool story. And when they get tired of them, you can sell them and get half your money back. <laughs> that's an awesome story. I like that. Thanks. Jelani, is there a market for teaching women how to launch and create businesses? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Let me give you... Uh, someone to help you with that. Let me tell you about Marie. This is all she does. And uh, this is one of the people that I track and follow because she's good. Marie has a course that she sells for 2500 bucks, roughly every quarter, or every six months, right? When she sells them, she usually sells thousands of this course not not dozens not hundreds but a few thousand she's at eight figures <clears throat> teaching women how to start businesses so yeah <laughs> yeah there's a there's a big market for that chuck how do you find out if your investment of stock ideas are good without telling the whole world of your ideas i to try to think out of the box uh, thoughts on stocks and investments all this up for graphs the way I see it, and all is not well like you used to be. Hold on a second. <clears throat> this is my thoughts, and they're going to be very unconventional. 
I know people who make a lot of money in various sectors of the stock market, bond market. There's a lot of money to be made. But this is the problem. If you don't know what you're doing, you can lose your ass. I don't know a lot about the stock market and I'm going in a different direction. All of the people that I know who are, and I really, really know, that have a money made it through a business. <clears throat> I know they're out there. I don't know any investors who got rich investing. I know it happens, but I'm not really well versed on that. Uh, for me, I'm kind of against it because <clears throat> I saw so many people lose their principal. <clears throat> Excuse me. One thing when you lose the interest, but you lose your principal, you're really getting pushed far back. Once again, I don't know a lot about the stock market. I know enough to be dangerous and I have a totally different investment strategy. Now, as for telling, you know, just execute your ideal. If you have an ideal, do it and see if it works out. Joseph, I'm kind of the same boat as Adolphus. Moved out of the USA to Colombia. <laughs> cool. We got China and Colombia in the house. This is awesome. Running my own writing and content company by looking to get into internet marketing. Any recommendations? What are you interested in? That would be my recommendation. What do you like to do? Or what or better, what are you really good at? Because if you're running your own writing and content company, is you know that international markets are totally different. And I know that in some of my writing groups, the people who are based outside the US have an issue sometimes dealing with Amazon. But <clears throat> I would really, really push that because you know it may sound crazy. I don't know how hard it is to get books there in Colombia, but many parts of the world, they can't get books and they don't have all these devices. So important knowledge might be a business idea. Alana, what are your thoughts on starting a self-help channel on eBay? Is that too crowded of a market? All right, let's talk about this. There's no such thing as too crowded of a market. If a market is real big and there's a lot of people in there, that means there's money there. How many diet pills have you seen? Huge market, right? Every few months, a new one comes out. How many fitness programs do you see on late night television? Every few months, new ones come out. Huge, huge market. Some of the biggest markets are weight loss, self-improvement, self-help, how to. It's just how you bring your spin to the marketplace. Lizzie, what tips can you uh, give to become the wolf? I am a sweet person look, look, looking to gain the, bit, the business mindset, attitude versus soldier, over friendly, etc. In a humble way, I want to be out for myself. Thanks, Glenn. <laughs> okay, let's talk about that. You can become a wolf and still remain the sweet Lizzie person that you are. Um, my friends, really close people to me, love the shit out of me because I'm a real nice person. I just learned that I have to be careful dispensing my goodness and sweetness to people. At large, there are, most people in the world only care about themselves. They may not say it, <laughs> but the, that's if you look at the evidence, that's generally what happens unless um, some pivotal event happens. Uh, essentially, tip number one, set some goals for yourself. Number one thing you need to do, set goals for yourself Two, create a lifestyle plan. Whatever you want to do with your life, plan it out and then go from there. Because typically most people don't get what they want in life is because they have no idea what the hell they want. It's like, ah, oh, this is good enough. Oh, OK. When you become really clear about what you want, it's amazing how fast it shows up. Melissa, no, I'm not feeling him. Gee, I'm married. Okay, that's your story. I understand. Adolphus, it's 3.30 in Shanghai, April 24th. I went to the trade shore and uh, I think that's Gangzhou by Hong Kong. Too many things to choose from. Uh, man, you are like on the... You could be our reporter. Um, you know what? This is what I want to do. Uh, let's see. What I'm going to do here, just because uh, I want to see this. 
I'm going to send you my email address and let's set up a, either a spree cast or something like that because I think it's real cool because see this is the thing I've traveled and many people have total misconceptions of how the other world lives you are in China right now knowing what the hell is going on so just hit me up and maybe we can set up that spree cast or Google Hangout or whatever I think it'll be real cool Chad, I knew you were going to mention Marie. I'm a man and she markets to women. She's good. I like Marie because at times she's inappropriate and that speaks to me. Her early videos, I mean, because uh, she's one of the people that I watched because everyone's like, who do you watch? Who do you watch? Okay. Uh, where the hell is it? For some reason, we're not going to YouTube, but don't worry about that. Now, I like Marie because she's a hustler. Marie is a hustler. Marie actually went through a bunch of jobs. She bartended. She did a lot of stuff that people wouldn't think she's done. But let's see. Let me do this real quick while it's doing that. All right. I actually know this guy too. Uh, here we go. I'm going to just show you something real quick. This is how you tell what a person's been up to YouTube if they don't hide it. And I'm quite sure she's not going to hide it. Uh, let's see. Let's move this here. Hey, it's Marie here. And guess what? Today it's time for some Q&A. Okay. This was 2010, right? And let's see. Carlos. And this is now. <laughs> She's been at this for 10 years. So this is one of the things that like, you know, I like to see people who never gave up. But yeah, you're right. She is uh, really, really good. Jonathan, Glendon, thanks again to the awesome info. I'm also in the IT services network and offsite backup. The focus on small business in the AT area. What's your outlook for a business like that? If I was in that world, I would specialize in security because everyone's, you know, just a quick tip to everyone that's looking at getting into an online business. Right now, only 9 to 11 percent of all commerce is done online. Out of that 9 to 10 percent, Amazon has 30 percent expectations is that number is going to go up to 40s before tapering off maybe 50 50 we're never going to get away where there's not going to be physical businesses that's not going to happen there's too many people like that in-person shopping experience but the room to grow is bananas but if i was uh in it i would focus on anything security related because with everyone going online security is just going to be a boom field because for every new technological advance on the internet there's going to be a technological advance on hacking so there's going to be this constant battle so who's ever really good with security it's going to get paid like crazy money kevin glenn completely off topic but why don't you have a radio show uh good question i had to make a decision on what i was going to do and where i was going to put my energy i looked at blog talk radio i looked at spree cast i look at this stuff and the thing is i have to leverage what i have and this thing here which pretty much was a lark when i started it is my biggest driver so it doesn't really make me make a lot of sense for me to move away from it right now i do have a plan for a podcast but there's a lot that i'm working on but at some point that may happen. Thanks for the question. Rachel, where do you recommend for ebook for formatting and cover arc work? Here you go. Let's see if I can spell it right. And <laughs> okay, I think uh hold on. 
let's see. What the hell is it? Uh, it's called Strivener, and I'm not spelling it right. Ah, there it is. I think they have it for Windows too. Okay, you can buy this for forty-five bucks. It's a great program for writers, any writer. But you, it includes a formatting tool. It'll do EPUB. It'll do uh, Mobi, which is what you need for Amazon. It's worth it for the price alone just to get the format too. There's uh, all kind of videos on YouTube to teach you how to use it, but that's where you want to go for formatting. If you pay someone, they may charge you 50, 100 bucks. I don't know what it is, but that's it. And for covers, you go to Fiverr or you can go to just Google covers. But Fiverr to me, if you're willing to spend like 20, 30 bucks, you can get a great cover because essentially you want you have a cover concept, right? Hire three or four people to do it. I mean, every person's five bucks, right? And there's going to be someone that's going to do a better job than the other two. And, you know, just to chalk it up to the cost of doing business. Darren, Glendon, I was approached by a guy about partnering up in the resale business. He has lots of inventory and a customer base. I have the box truck and I'm good refurbishing and upcycling furniture. And we both have good items, eye for items. Do you think parling up early is a good idea or should I be cautious? I had a partner from day one in the resale business, so partners are good in my mind. What you two have to be is really clear on your responsibilities. One of the reasons that many partnerships go bad is they were never adequately defined before anything happened. Sit down with the guy and say, look, how are we going to split this? You know, and you know, and better just say, look, you know, let's get married for 90 days. So yeah, just like that. And he's like, what? Yeah, let's do this for 90 days. Have a and people like, oh, you know, why do we need a written contract? You need a written contract. If they don't want to do a written, honest people don't have a problem with contracts. Only shady people have a problem with contracts because they know, damn, I can't do what I was going to do. Just put it on a sheet on a napkin. It's like, hey, we're going to work together for 90 days. And whatever we work on, we're splitting the profit and we're also splitting the pain. A lot of people don't want to do it. It was like, yeah, hey, profit, I'm in. Pain, no, no, you keep that. And just, you know, if it's very equitable, it should work out fine. Because after 90 days, you're going to find out if you want to work with this guy. You're going to find out if his work ethic is good as yours. Or Because sometimes in a partnership, one person ends up doing most of the work and that creates a great deal of resentment. Adolphus, cool. I'll be stateside in the week. No, nah, man, we could do that while you're over there. <laughs> Just let me know. Uh, Rachel, thank you for the power of six. Explain no money. Did two lists on Tuesday morning. One personal household to the business. Knocked them all out by 12. It's very powerful stuff. Christina, have you heard of shipping freight? of brick and brack or used clothing in other countries. What's the quick overview of that? Any major problems with it? Uh, actually, I know some people who've done it. One, you need someone on the, on the ground over there. You need someone on the ground that you can trust. Big problem, getting through customs. Get, get held up in customs for a few weeks or forever. Also, you know, the money side. Uh, if I was going to do it, I would make sure I would just become a broker. Meaning I sell the stuff to someone else, which means before that container leaves the USA, I got my money. Because once it leaves here, whatever happens is what happens and you have no recourse. There's no like, I'm going to sue you. Good luck with that. You would have to go to whatever country they're in and go through all that stuff. Knowing what I know, I would not get in that business unless I had a real great deal of expertise on both sides of the pond. Too many things can go wrong. One of my neighbors in the warehouse district used to ship cars to Russia. But this guy, he was Russian. His brother was Russian. He had connections all out the ass. Uh, Melalusia, I've been bouncing around the idea of a podcast for a long time. Which site do you recommend? I recommend that you go ahead and uh, go to Google, not Google, YouTube, and watch all of the podcasting videos you can because this is what happens with podcasting. You can go to one of these sites and get leveraged or you can create your own and pay for your hosting. And for a lot of people don't understand, 
when you start a podcast, you have to have a site to host the digital content, which means once you got that site to host it, which is uh, Lisbon, um, actually, I will show you. This is what I used. Because there's so many things out there. Where is it? It's pretty cheap. You just go there, poke around, and then you can put your podcast wherever. You can put it on your blog. You can do links on Facebook. And you can put it on iTunes if you want to. Chris, Marie sounds interesting. I really want to learn how to sell to women. I start buying women lockers because nobody wants them. I make out like a fat round of these women's lockers, but really need to learn how to sell the stuff. I usually sell the guys looking for nice stuff on the cheap for their girls. Um, I was the first person to talk about women's clothing on YouTube, and a lot of folks forget that. And I'm, I'm raising my paw and say it was me. Essentially, women shop, do the shopping themselves. You have to, this is how you sell the women. You have to present it in a very nice and appealing way. Have, just go in your girlfriend's or wife's bathroom and notice how it's set up. Everything that they have is pretty, dainty, dainty bright, shiny, everything. I don't care if it's a $2 item. It has a cute factor to it. So if you're going to sell women's clothing, take the time to hang them up. Make sure they're not you know, so tight together that they have to work beautify as my partner used to say beautific and stuff that sells to women it's presentation that's why stores spend so much money hooking these places up <laughs> kevin i accept donations for good questions it's funny you mentioned that i'll talk about that later Chuck, what do you do when you go, where do you go when you have an idea or an APP, but don't know shit about making one? What is an APP? Alex, Glennon, I run a small graphic design printing business out of my home. I design all types of products for my customers, like business cards, flyers, postcards, pamphlets, and I send out prints to a, to a wholesale printer. I get very good mockups and offer free delivery to my customers in the area. How do you suggest creating a bit a biggest a the biggest customer base other than beating the pavement with my business card? Um God, okay. Uh, essentially this is what 30 days to 2500 bucks is about. Taking your small business and making it bigger. Pounding the pavement is one thing and you've got to leverage it. There there's that's why I created the course, because I can talk about that question for the next hour or two, actually for the next month, really. Uh, I would suggest uh, you, you get the uh, 30 days, 2,500 bucks, because you already have the business, you already have customers, and it's going to help you grow that. Regarding a partnership, would you ever become a business partner with a family member? Uh, yeah, I've got a few cousins that I would easily partner with. It's not that they're family. It's the question is if they're sane and realistic. If they're not sane and realistic, no. Family or not family. You just get the hell away from me. Aaron says for customs, get a customs broker. Cherries, I believe. I'm in the process of completing my book, 101 Energy Thoughts for Your Well Being. Do you have any suggestions? Should I make it an ebook first, a self published hardcover book? Cherries, cherries, cherries. Oh, God, you don't want to do a hardcover. <laughs> no, 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 no. You do the ebook first. You do the ebook first. You can do the ebook and put it on all of the sites for no money. Your only cost is going to be formatting, editing, stuff like that. Um, ebook definitely first. And this is why. Hold on. When you start selling your book, you're going to find out if it sells or not. And you're going to have to market the shit out of it to sell it. But start simple and work your way up. If your book takes off, guess what? Publishers will come looking for you for that hardcover book. It's almost become a way of entry into traditional publishing that you self-publish, get a bunch of sales. Then they're like, hello. Do you want to sign this book deal? So definitely the ebook first.
Anna, what do you think about becoming a freight broker? I just seem to keep finding an affiliate market selling trading programs for $99.99. I think don't do it. Don't do it. That's what I think. Don't do it. This is the thing with um, any business. If you don't really know how it works, bad things can happen. Not saying don't do it. If you want to be a freight broker, Go ahead and get as much information about freight brokerage as you can before you buy the program. You may actually end up knowing more than what the program contains. Kevin, how do you resolve disputes in your partnership? I had a partner once and I ended up doing most of the work. Pissed me off. Going back to the agreement that is set up before you even become partners. Spell all that stuff out before. Whatever you're going to fight about before your partners, you're going to go to war about after your partners. Chuck, how do you sell miscellaneous women's items if you have no women around and don't want to look like a creep? Told friends about your panty stories. They laughed in my face till they saw your video and prices it was, it was going for used. Okay, we're talking about two different things in two different customer markets. The people who bought the used panties were not women. They were dudes who got off on panties worn by women they didn't know. Now, selling to women is a totally different ball game. Stuff has to be super clean, super nice. I don't know what you mean, like coming off with a creep. Um, if you have what they want and you're nice and personable, I don't see the problem. Here's Michael. He's giving a tip for everybody. If you want to sell women, there's a book called Why She Buys by Bridget Brennan. And all what I'm going to do. Thank you, Michael. Let's get this highlighted. All right, I'm gonna have to do it. I don't know why it does this at times. And I'm going to send it to everybody. Okay. <laughs> Let's try it again. Hold on. Sometimes, aha, we have success now. All right, I'm sending this to everybody. Whoever wants it, thank Michael for it. Kickstarter might be a tax deduction. That's cool. Oh, smartphone application. That is out of my range of expertise. I know there's crazy podcasts. This is someone else that puts out a lot of good information. I believe there is a podcast he did with a guy about apps. No, I, I no, actually, I know for a fact. Just go here. Look up his podcast and you will find it. And they talk about that stuff. Okay. <laughs> Melissa, there lies my interest in Cleaver. Not lazy and not afraid of rejection. He's out there beating the pavement. Always said, an ambitious man. That's the best cologne. Ambition is the best cologne a man can wear. Uh, Jelani's talking about for who wants to publish, she could consider instantpublisher.com. Terry, you always forecast that the job market bubble has burst and is deflating. So is it wise to become business savvy and quit your job? But how do you envision the self-employed person when adapting the landscape when very few have jobs and everyone is selling? Okay, great question. I'm going to just. You will have people that the financial house that they're in will be on flames and they will not change their mindset and start a business. You don't have to worry about that happening. You will have people going on government assistance, robbing people shooting people before they will start a business because mentally they can't do it. I had a lunch with a friend last week and we were talking about all of the people and when the qualifications was make $50,000 or more from their own internet business profit, not gross sales. Those people, we, we thought, you know, we, we went back and forth. I said they would overflow a large football stadium and he said, you know, about 500,000. Which sounds like a lot of people, but in a country of 310 million folks, 
That's not even a percentage point. And that's what's happening now. I don't care how bad it gets. There's only going to be a few people who are going to have the courage to go out and do their own thing. There's going to be a group that's going to be forced and they're going to do it and they'll be successful. But you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about that at all. And there will always be a group of people who will have jobs. There will always be certain government jobs. There will always be certain hospital jobs. There'll be. It's just it's going to be challenging for people to make what I call escape your mama's house income. How many people do you know who are your age, whatever age you are, doesn't, you know, who are 20 something, 30 something, 40 something, they living with mom or dad because they can't make it on their own. It has become so hard for a kid between the ages of 18 and 26 to get out of the house is ridiculous. I left home at night, 18 and a half, and I never went back. And I know many people who did the same. Now, that is kind of like, whoa, you know, a lot of kids leaving home at 24, 25, 26 if they ever leave. So you don't have to worry about that, dude. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that at all. Uh, Dominic, what would be your parameters be for finally signing with a hard book publisher? If some publisher came my way, the only thing I would sell them would be hard copyrights. I would keep the audio book rights. I would keep the international rights and I would kick the ebook rights. Only thing they could do is print up a nice hardcover for me and put them in whatever bookstores still exist. That, that's it. Uh, there's a guy and I can show you uh, who did just that. And he got, a, I think, a seven figure deal. I believe this is his name. Hold on. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> this made big deal. He was the first one to do it and it came out publicly. Did this around this time last year. I believe he got a million dollars. And the only thing he sold was his hard book rights. He kept everything else. Because, you know, just for clarification, when you write a book and many people signed away rights they didn't know that they had. Now we have ebooks, you have audio books, you have international rights, you have hardcover. All of those are different deals. And often people sign contracts and sell all of those rights away for one money. There's you I would never give up my ebook rights ever <laughs> because an ebook is perpetual. And this is something that I learned with my YouTube videos. Just because something doesn't take off the first day. I have a video I did over a year ago. For some reason, it's just climbing. And also, I used to be a member of a book club. There are many writers who wrote a book and for, you know, didn't do anything. Then five years later, bam, it took off. So you don't ever want to sell what that you own. When I worked in the hospital, I got to learn some very important lessons from Curtis Mayfield. He was a patient at Northside. And he just told me about how a song, you know, there's three parts of a song. There's the publishing, the royalties, the lyrics, other stuff. And he, each one is big money if the song's a hit. So that's what I would do. Uh, Cliff B, what do you think about publishing courses to Unity? Uh, thought about it, but I'm really, you know, I don't think it's bad. I don't know a lot about them. I went to the site. I know a lot of big names for publishing stuff there. May do it in the future, may not. Chuck, a man selling women's stuff, no wife, no girlfriend, that's a creep to something. Okay, Chuck, this just let, let me drop it for you. It's not creepy unless you think it's creepy. If I have sold purses, all right, I'm going to go over the day because I'm in that kind of mood. I used to buy a lot of stuff off Craigslist. I cannot tell you how many women in the middle of the day, let me into their houses to look at the stuff they had for sale, and they were alone. I am six foot one, 255, and black. <laughs> I can't say, I'm like, I've never had that problem. Just say to yourself, I'm not a creep, you know, put out the non creep vibe. I mean, I've sold purses, all kinds of stuff. I mean, I, I, I'm maybe I'm just special like that. I don't know, but it, I never had it. Never was a problem. And if you feel you need to get a girl, go out and get you a stunt girl. <clears throat> Find one of your female friends and say, "Hey, I'm gonna sell some stuff to women. Just kind of hang around." <laughs> All right, Melissa. Thanks.
Christina, since you referred me to your course for almost every question I have, do you talk about how to file taxes when you're buying lockers and reselling? Looks like you got me and I might have to break down and get your course. Okay. What you do with the income that comes from selling lockers is pushed into your business income. The first year you can get away with not filing, but once you start filing, you have a business. The expectation is you will file every quarter. It's, it's going to be just to give it to you. You buy a unit for 300 bucks and then you assign the value that, oh, we made a thousand dollars profit. So you spent 30, 30, 300 bucks, you made a thousand or we bought a unit for a thousand and lost our ass. So we actually had net losses. Also, I will say this. Get yourself an accountant. It's worth the money. Many people are like, hey, I'm going to do the taxes myself when you run because they do this stuff all the year long. And I will tell you, if you're doing units and you're doing a lot of driving, the mileage deduction alone could bring a lot of money back to you. Chuck, should you ever listen to a straight up loser in regards to what not to do or go your own way? I will answer this question like this. Would you listen to a broke person tell you how to make money? No. <laughs> uh, Terry, Tasker is an excellent open source Android app, which allows you to create unique uh, for Android. I guess unique apps for Android with automates all kind of things. Anything you can dream of. There you are for whoever wanted to do the app. Jelini, so this means that those who start the business will make their money catering to the needs of those who are too scared to do it. That's pretty much the way it is right now. So, yes. Chuck, that damn prom dress messed me up. The BS I had to go through. <laughs> Yep, Kevin, hire a female front worker or sales team if you if possible commission. Rachel, hey, some of us moved back to Mama's house by choice, and I had totally made my husband go pick up breast pumps that I bought on Craigslist to resell online. Not once, not twice, but three times so far. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so what I'm going to do, this is something. All right. One of the things that was going on with 30 days, 2,500 bucks was all kind of uh, tasks. So I came up with this when I was on my morning walk and I said, I'm going to do it. So for those of you who like me, I've created a tip jar opening tips, two bucks. You like the webinar, you like anything I do, but you don't have enough for the other stuff. Throw in a tip. So I'm going to send that to everybody. And this drops Friday. It's going to be a different kind of book. So if you want the early bird special, I'm sending that to you right now. And someone said something about 30 days. I'm going to give you two ways to get in monthly plan and the. Well, actually, it's not monthly. It's three payments for a year. That's for 30 days. Then ask me if you didn't know for people who want consults you can go there and for folks who want lifetime and what this is, is anything I do any product I put out you get forever and forever if you join this group it's a killer deal and that's it that's it and uh, if you want to be here next one I don't know if I'm doing Friday or not but what I'm let me just explain before parting what I'm working on. I'm probably going to do the, this is Monday's. I'm going to be here next Monday. That's a lock. I'm going to do this every Monday and Wednesday's looking like it's going to be a lock. I don't know if I'm going to do Friday, but if you want to be invited or know when this is going on, be sure to get on the email list. How do you get on the email list? It's under every video. <laughs> just grab the free audio book and booyah, you're in there. And I will send out an email the night before or uh, if I know I'm going to do three days, I'll just go ahead and say, hey, this is what's happening next week. But Monday is definitely a lock and Tuesday's looking like it's going to be a lock for these little chats because I got somebody in China. I have someone in Colombia. I think that's fucking awesome. You just don't know because I'm really zooted. I want to talk to this dude because uh, just to let you know, there's uh, I've got. 
people in Australia in the course of two people. I can't pronounce the name of the country, but I'm having a lot of people who are bringing some international flavor to the G-verse, which I think is really, really cool. I think it's very, very awesome. So with that, I will say, hey, thanks for coming out today. And uh, be sure to join that email list. And we, I may be here Friday. Don't know yet. But if I am, uh, the email will go out tomorrow. Thanks for everybody that came out. And uh, I'll see you on the good side. Okay.